Uh, so my name is Ellen Sachs. I am a professor of law, psychology, and psychiatry in the behavioral sciences at the USC Law School, adjunct professor of psychiatry at UCSD Medical School, and faculty at the New Center for Psychoanalysis. I'm also a woman who uh, fell ill in 1977 with what turned out to be uh, schizophrenia. Um, I was uh, given a grave and a very poor prognosis. I was expected to be unable to live independently, let alone to work, but that's not how my life turned out. As a child, I had some symptoms. I was phobic, I had obsessions, I was afraid a man was standing outside my window waiting to come in and kill us all, and even when I looked, I would say, well, he just hid, and I had that for many years. As a teenager, I had a brief period of anorexia. I also had a brief stint with drug use, which in sort of an overreaction landed me in a drug rehab program. Went to college, had some kind of out of control episodes my first and last year, but didn't really officially break down until I was a student at Oxford. And it started out looking like depression with mild paranoid features and evolved into a pure thought disorder, namely schizophrenia. You know, I did not have a traumatic childhood, but my parents didn't really get that I could have used a really significant mental health treatment even then. I mean, mental health wasn't on people's radar screens the way it is today. So it wasn't really addressed. It just happened and it, you know, ended itself. And then, you know, I was fine for many years. I did have a period when I was a teenager where I had read Sylvia Plath's Bell Jar and it spoke to me as it does to many young women. And one day I just got up in school and started walking five miles home. And it was just the houses were communicating with me. They weren't speaking. I didn't hear them, but I thought they were putting thoughts in my head. And the, the visual perception was very distorted. It was like the houses were kind of purplish and moving and really, really scary. Uh, when I got home, I told my parents about it, but um, and it was a day and time when people didn't really have mental illness on their radar screens, and I think they thought I just used drugs and drove me into the drug program. Well, for one thing, it spares people more pain if they can get treated early and you know uh, get relief. Um, another thing is I think you know the earlier you treat someone, you know the more treatable it is. It's before it's become entrenched and part of your identity and a way of life. Um, another thing is there's some evidence that quote, the length of untreated psychosis correlates with more brain damage. So we want to get in there early. Um, I think, you know, I would have liked, uh, and they maybe do it more now, more education about what mental illness looks like and what you can do about it so that, you know, one could actually notice warning signs in oneself and other people and also education about, you know, where you go uh, to get help and how do you get help and what does help consist of. I think it would have been useful to hear other people's stories they say with stigma that coming to see mental health disorders as brain disorders doesn't much reduce stigma, but putting a human face on does. So if at orientation, say, a couple of students got up and said, you know, I have depression, I have bipolar, I have schizophrenia, it's not a life sentence, you can still have a good and productive and happy life, but take advantage of treatment resources and so on. So I think that, that would have been useful. For me, I've had really intensive treatment, five-day-a-week uh, psychoanalytic psychotherapy and medication once I accepted the need for medication. Very few people can afford that. You know, I sometimes give a talk and someone in the audience will say, you know, I can afford to see my patient for 15 minutes every three months. How on earth are they supposed to do as well as you do seeing someone five days a week? And I just say, you're right. I feel some survivor guilt. I wish there were something one could do to help people have all the advantages that I've had. And I've also done a study of, quote, high-functioning people with schizophrenia with Dr. Steve Martyr at UCLA. And we have, people say I'm unique, but I'm not. We have two MDs, two JDs, a PhD candidate, full-time students, full-time uh, CEOs of non-for-profits, full-time uh, caregivers. People just don't come forward because the stigma is so great, but we, we do exist. And I once asked Steve, what percentage of people with schizophrenia does he think are high-functioning in our sense, so professional, managerial, technical? He said, I don't know, and the real question is how many could be if we devoted proper resources? And I think that's exactly right. We need to step up and provide resources.